Hello and welcome back to the X Files Revisited. We are on to episode seven of season six, which is Terms of Endearment. Now, you know, being X Files fans, we've seen some big stars appear in the episodes, but I, I think we could argue that this is probably the biggest one they've had so far. Bruce Campbell joins us <laughs> in this episode. Yep, Bruce Campbell playing a demon. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, uh, well, I, I know you were looking forward to this one from last week because. I told you Bruce Campbell was in it, and then and that was it. He was like, sold, sold. <laughs> yeah. But, it, yeah, so sometimes it can be a great disappointment when uh, someone we really love kind of pops mm. in on a show and we're like, oh, no, I've got to watch it. So it's, it's a lot of, yeah, built up quite a lot for you. But whether it lives up to your hopes and dreams, we will get into. But let's see if we can figure out where you think the X-Files fandom stands on it. Out of 217 episodes on IMDb, where do you think the fans have ranked it? 139. Ooh. A bit low. It's 122. Yeah, 122 so they've ranked it. Yeah, so not quite as good, but mm -hmm. by some margin, as yeah. last week's uh, How the Ghost Stole Christmas. I, I'm, I'm intrigued yeah. to find out which of the two you would place higher because you, you weren't quite as fond of how the ghost Scru stole christmas last week as i was so yeah yeah, yeah. this yeah. this will be be interesting i mean now, this I one gets say... a whole extra star a whole yeah. extra star for bruce campbell <laughs> yeah just for campbell just for campbell um i will say that i do not yet have a rating written down for this one normally i'm Snap. quite sure yeah why okay normally i'm quite sure i just yeah that was a this one i'm like oh i don't know actually now i've got a ballpark mm. and i know i know that it's it's at least a dot 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 but um whether or not it gets to be a dot 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 and a half i don't know so we'll we shall see how this conversation sways <laughs> I've, I've just i've went for an initial thought so i've marked down a score now I've gone for it. Just just as an initial score, like... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in all fairness, right. I literally finished this episode about 30 seconds before we started recording. you got to love our prep. It's, it's just... <laughs> it's a wing and a prayer prep. That's, that's what it that's is. That's the closer to the episode, the less chance of me forgetting mm. things, Brian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, my problem is I uh, I tend to watch them a few days in advance and then, then I'm like, right, I've watched it, Graham, so let's let's book a day in. By the time it comes on, I'm like, what are my notes all about? It's all... <laughs> well, I mean, if you remember last week, I think it was a, a, we were a, a few days removed from the episode, both of us, and it was like two old yeah. men remembering the war. Like, <laughs> you just couldn't pinpoint any information. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was quite embarrassing gotta be sad but yeah terms of endearment let's get into it we open up on a husband and wife that you are given bad news about their pregnancy wayne the father of the child steps outside he looks quite distraught he goes outside to compose himself splash some water on his face and then the wife she comes out to talk to him and kind of comfort him and, and see if he's all right and he's like i just want it to be normal uh and yeah uh that that's kind of a scene within and it of itself uh yeah and, and as the x files goes it's mm. it's rather sedate i mean you kind of have an idea that there's something going to be wrong with the view but it feels almost like too straight like an x files mm. opening like there's nothing fantastical. Yeah. There's, it's quite an emotional kind of subject matter. I think a lot of people could sympathise with that. So mm. it's, it just feels almost putting you in the back foot a little bit. So they settle down to bed and Wayne says, I love you, Laura, no matter what. Mm. And she's just, yeah, you know, that's normal. My husband's telling me he loves me. That's great. All good. But then she dreams of a demon taking her bed. Dreams. <laughs> of a demon yeah. taking a baby because uh, it's not reality this isn't actually happening right now is it yeah. uh, she wakes up to lots of blood in the bed and the baby now gone love the visual spray i thought the, the whole devil thing was uh, mm. terrific it's so 
it, it's borderline between being kind of freaky and just being laughably like lo-fi almost. Do you know what I mean? Like it, yeah, you could easily yeah. discount no, I, it I, as I, a dream. Th- the thing is, this is one of the moments for me that really sticks out. Where, like, when you look at the image that is behind us, obviously, like, if, if you're watching on YouTube, like, the image that's behind us, you can't quite see it now because we're obstructing it. But at the start, for the thumbnail on this, basically, I picked that image of the demon at the end of the bed. Mm. And when you look at it as a still, it does look kind of cheap, a little bit tacky in a way. And yet, I remember distinctly when I first saw this that it sent a shiver down my spine. Mm. There was something about it that just creeped me out. And I think it's that safety of the bed being violated. Like okay. when you go t- to bed at night and you put your bed covers up. I mean, we've all done it as kids, I would imagine. You get scared, so you put your bed covers over you as if that's actually going to protect you. Like, that's how stupid kids are. They think that, you know, if, well, if something's in the room, I'll just, I'll hide under my covers. It's, mm. it's, got, it's not going to do anything. And yet there is a certain sense, a feeling of safety that is garnered from, from being in bed. Or there should be at any rate, if you've had, you know, if you've had a yeah. fairly normal existence. So it's that thing about, you know, a bit like the shower being invaded by Norman Bates in Psycho. Or, mm. or you know the, the the water suddenly being the stuff of nightmares because of jaws. It, it it's mm. that it's taken something that's ordinary that we should be okay with that we should be comfortable in, and it's invaded it with this kind of nightmare. And it, it yeah it sent shivers down my spine when I first watched it. And I got to admit a little bit this time as well when I watched it. Yeah, so, I, I think it's an effective image. I think. As well, like with the X-Files, a lot of things are done in glimpses or in swift cuts mm. and it moves really quickly and it's hard to get a grasp on what you're seeing sometimes, where this time it shows you and it doesn't look, look away, it shows you the image and in, in that it, it becomes kind of terrifying because they're, like they're, they're showing it to us. It's horrific. The idea of it, the flames, the man pulling the woman towards him, uh, uh, forcing the legs open, it's, it's horrifying. Yeah, everything about it is invasive. Uh, so, mm. yeah. Dete- De- Deputy Stevens, we, we get Dete- Deputy Stevens, Sheriff Deputy Stevens, talks with Spender about his mm. sister's ordeal. So the woman in the bed at the beginning is his sister. And he's talking to Spender. Spender's looking at him, looking like he's all, oh, yeah, very, very interested in what he's got to say. And he's, he's going to be there for it. He's going to be on the case. He's going to... And he even says, we're going to make this a priority case. And as soon as Deputy is gone, Spender, in grade A douchebag move, sticks the file, sticks the case file straight into yeah. Yeah, the, the blender. Yeah, and, and, and for somebody that's so, so much of a stickler of the way things should be done, surely that is not the way things are done. Surely you just can't, like, if you're not going to investigate, you're not going to investigate, but it needs to be filed away and stored, I would imagine. But he's just, just well, doesn't no, care. Because at this, well, even more than that, at this point, he's now working for his father. So mm. it's actually in his father's best interest and therefore his best interest to destroy all evidence of any kind of supernatural activities or anything that Mulder might get his hands on to cut to cover up to deny that's now what the x-files is being run by essentially so it it makes sense in a way that he would do this i think he he was he was a he was a career climber until his dad came into the picture but the funny thing the funny thing is if he had actually just filed this away Mulder would never have discovered it (laughs) <laughs> like if he did what he was supposed to do the fact that he bends it <laughs> leads it straight to Mulder's yeah. door yeah I, I, I when I see this moment I, I'm thinking Batman Returns Penguin a lot of tape yeah. <laughs> and a little patience yeah. make all the difference Mulder is driven to the house by Deputy Stevens as he holds the shredded statement that has been painstakingly taped back together <laughs> yeah he is thanked, but asks that Stevens keep his name out of things. His 
<laughs> clearly not meant to be there. It's clearly off the oh, box. Yeah. But I love the idea of this because you just you see it getting shredded and then you see it pieced together and you're just like, he's doing that with every bit of, of documents that come out of that place. Like he must yeah. have a he must be spending his evenings like solving puzzles, <laughs> putting these back together. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. If Spender had any nouse about him, he'd be coming in every morning going, Where's all these shredded papers going? It's like who keeps yeah. emptying my bin? It's like, it's not even full. Uh, Laura gives her testimony, then makes herself scarce. Mulder mm. talks a little with Wayne, who reminds him his wife was dreaming, Mr. Mulder. And Mulder asks to use the phone. So, right. Like, for me, at this point, I'm like, okay. I'm starting to suspect Wayne right off the bat here, just because of the, you know. Uh, well, he, it, and all friends, when she wakes up and... In, in the bed at the start and Wayne's not there I'm just like okay it's Bruce Campbell it's, <laughs> it's him like it's just yeah. that, that's it yeah yeah it's gotta be gotta be yeah so Scully is interviewing someone in a pokey little office like it literally looks like a, a closet yeah <laughs> just, just crammed into this it's 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 longer than it is wide it just looks ridiculous and that's when she so she's basically she's she's doing background checks basically for, for anyone who's coming into the fbi they have to be background checked and she in other words it's grunt work it is mm -hmm. the lowest of the low it is punishment from director kirsch for everything they've done in the past few episodes essentially Mulder calls her really invested doesn't she <laughs> It's all in the body language, baby. So Mulder calls her and says, Scully, this is a classic case, a classic case of demon fetal harvest. Yeah. Oh, I had a it. chuckle love at that one. It was just great. Yeah. But even, even before that, um, I love that, that Mulder should be doing this job as well. <laughs> He's just not. He's yeah. just left it all to Scully. <laughs> he just doesn't care. He's just... Yeah, you can just tell she's pissed off with this. Like the guy's just every day. She she knows she's going in there to do it alone, and he's going to phone mm. her up with some wacky case or something bonkers. You know, a demon fetal harvest. <laughs> it's just, and she knows that she's not going to be able to resist. She's going to have to go and say, yeah, okay, all right. Let's see how much more trouble I'm going to get into now because of you. I, I feel like every time Mulder does something, it's Scully who ends up getting punished for it. <laughs> yeah. So, so Wayne listens in on the call because obviously, remember, Mulder's still at Wayne's house. He's out in the corridor. Mm -hmm. He's making this call. And it turns out that Wayne's got the baby monitor on. So he's he's hearing everything that's going on in this call. Now, now which, which begs the question, how loud... Does Mulder have his phone? Because she ain't on speaker. He's got it up to his ear. He's having a proper phone conversation. And then when we go to the baby monitor, Scully is coming through loud and clear, almost like she's in the room there with him. I wonder if it's maybe just picked up the phone signal. Look, it could, I suppose it could have. Yeah, it's a stretch. That's a stretch. D to me, what I glean from that is that it, he's... He's just hearing that conversation coming through the baby monitor, and it just sounds, yeah. Scully should be yeah. a lot fainter than Mulder, at the very least, but it's not. It's like the two of them are in that room talking together. Laura looks for Wayne late at night, but he's outside, burning leaves. <laughs> you yeah. know, as you do, 11 o'clock at night. He tells her it to go like back inside. To it, well, yeah, yeah. It's when I burn my leaves, you know. All those leaves I've got to burn. He tells her to go back inside, then cries tears from his demon eyes. Because, you know, whenever we have a demon in a TV or film, yeah. it, 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 the, the eyes have got to go red or yellow or yeah. some kind of weird colour. I mean, this is just after he's, he's dug that... out the the bloody thing from the, the, the rag from the uh, pile of leaves. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Well, we know. We know. It's, it's, by this <clears> point, like, it's just it's quite clear that he's something involved in this yeah everything that's going on here is just as horrific as the start of the episode home and yet it doesn't feel it you get my you get my drift because like the start of home you know they bury that baby that the, the mother has the baby and they take it outside and they bury it and it's it's like yeah it, it, it it's all the same kind of murky icky depths of depravity that 
we kind of had in that episode, but for some reason, it it doesn't hit you in the same way that home does. Because it's a, it's a suburban, normal family rather than inbred mm. hicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and also the baby is dead, whereas in home it was yeah, it was still yeah. kind of kicking. But then you don't uh, <laughs> really you don't see much either. But it's it's all like even in home it's all like rainy, mucky, you know, mm. ickiness. Whereas this one it's all kind of like clinically yeah. clean. Even the gardens are like manicured. Yeah, Mulder is woke up in his car by his phone. Scully tells mm. him a load of medical nonsense that basically means horns. She tells him to arrest the mother. They found mandrake in her system used to abort babies and the mother most likely did it, given that the doctor that kind of dealt with them said that she was as cool as a cucumber on the day that they came in and got the bad news, whereas the husband was quite yeah. shaken. So, yeah, that suggests that she was not quite, yeah. you know, on I mean, it's, the same it's really, cylinders as everyone else. It's really just judging people and how they grieve. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, and yeah, really like, yeah, you know, basically. you don't show anything outwardly, so by that point, mm. you know, there's something wrong with you. Uh, yeah, whereas that he's crying, yeah. but so so we we'll say that he's fine. Absolutely, and 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 a lot to say about guilt as well, because people yeah. people assume all the, the you know the one who's crying and is you know he's all heartfelt. So, but mm -hmm. actually, it could just be a sign of guilt. Uh, yeah, and, and other things. So, never judge a book by its cover. The moral of mm -hmm. this episode. There you go. Mulder goes to the house, knocks on the on the door, which opens, but it's not who we expect. And it turns out we've done a jump cut to another woman at a different house with a bun in the oven. She's pregnant, and who yeah. should be kind of waiting for her on the other side of the door? The man who knocked. But Wayne visiting a second wife that he has stored away in suburbia somewhere. Mm. Oh, you dirty devil. Yeah, well, literally dirty devil. Mm. Um, yep. it, it, I tell you what's really shocking. It's the differences between the women here. You know, this one mm. seems much more stronger, more assured, uh, self-dependent almost. You know, another one seems a bit more easily cajoled and pushed and completely different yeah absolutely uh i i've seen this woman from somewhere and i can't think where i did actually mean to yeah. look it up beforehand but i've definitely seen her in something uh, but yeah well you're no doubt trying to look that up i'll have a look see I'll if crack I can find on. It. so deputy stevens is going ballistic at Mulder for even suggesting that his sister might have something to do with it then Wayne rocks up uh, somewhat quickly, I would say. Uh, give it, yeah. like so he's gone to see his he's gone to see his other wife, and all this just seems the, the the time here, the time frame just seems a bit off. Like, did you literally just pop in, give her a kiss, say how are you doing? Okay, bye. I've got to go again because it it feels like he, yeah, literally a yeah fleeting exactly. visit, and then he's back home. Yeah, you're like, are, are these people like next door neighbours almost? It just seems as if yeah. you, you'd want a bit more distance between the two of them. <clears throat> mm, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I've, I've just so, in a side note, I, I've had a quick look at this actress and mm. she's just like one episode of TV shows and nothing really jumps out at me. It's, it's, it's probably one, what it'll be. She's Smallville I, maybe I or something like that. I don't know. Like, definitely um, seen her in something. I'm sure I have. No movies quiz on show. there. No. Oh, quiz she show. She was in um, I've, the I've, seasons of Murder One. Right. Well, I've I've seen Quiz Show, so that's probably where I'm probably where I'm getting yeah. faced from. But yeah. Anyway, swiftly moving on. Uh, so yeah, Wayne rocks up, as I say, kind of throwing off my idea of how time works in this world. Uh, yeah. Mulder says Laura is not under arrest, and a search of the house could help clear her. But you'd hate like the devil for anything to happen to her. Mulder says. Away, which I really love. It's like the typical kind of Mulder. I know who you are, uh, and I'm yeah. going to throw a little hint in so that you know that I know who you are. Which is yeah, just nice bit of kind of yeah. It's not as subtle, no, it's, but, you know, it's just 
you know, it's kind of in the face. Like, yeah. Mulder's always like, you can be a little bit funny and a little bit obtuse with things, but this is just in your face. I do love the, mm-hmm. the douchebag sheriff here, though, like protecting his sister. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't call him a douchebag sheriff. This is a very sensitive matter. It is his sister, as you say, and yes, he has that's just lost his niece. <laughs> Whenever there's local police, they're just douchebags. Yeah. <laughs> Even when they're not, that's their designation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Des- designated douchebag. So the police search the house, and Mulder finds a lot of fibre. <laughs> it just he goes walking past with all. <laughs> It's just pure vibe. I'm like, okay, what's that all about? But yeah, they're they're regular. Wayne talks to Laura when he sees them searching the furnace and he shows just how evil he really is by pinning it all on her. Then the police find the remains. So this is literally the most callous, cold-hearted moment of the entire episode that... Yeah. that shows us that this guy really doesn't have any love for this woman at all. There's there's a suggestion there that there is at the end, but if you love someone, you even in the slightest, you don't do this to them. You don't yeah. make them believe that they are responsible for killing their own unborn child. It's just like there's yeah. low and then there's satan it's like yeah well it's yeah it, it's very cold and calculating and, and you know this woman mm. is already emotional she's distraught a lot's going on and he is just pushing her into the the guilty verdict so he can go away with yeah. his next opportunity it's the psychology behind it the fact that he's mm. making her believe this it's like ah, oh, that's that's evil yeah so the police question laura and she's already blaming herself now that she now that the seed has been planted. Mulder looks on, not buying any of it, as Deputy Stevens is forced to arrest his sister. Which is, you know, I feel for yeah. the guy. Yeah, yeah, at this point, I'm just like, why the hell is he still involved with this investigation? Like, like surely there must be some <laughs> other officer that can take over. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's like you'd think the sheriff themselves would be like, Look, I want to hazard a guess that you're a bit too close to this case. <laughs> so either they're really short of manpower or mm-hmm. his superior just really does not like, it, which quite frankly could be the case. So as they take her away, Wayne says he's going to get her the best attorney. Mulder walks past him and says, I know what you are. It's, it's just like, really great moment just hammering home you know as if the as if the little devil remark wasn't enough mm. he just he literally flat out says i, don't know, I know what you are and uh, we, we get what is easily my favorite scene of the episode so wayne wayne is driving super fast in his ferrari oh, yeah. listen listening to only happy when it rains by garbage uh, which takes me right back to the 90s when i listened to that album non-stop for about six months yep. you too mm-hmm. yeah. as he makes his way back to betsy his second wife or possibly mm. third fourth fifth or even sixth wife who knows mm. Mulder pulls up at the side of him where are we going mm-hmm. he says <laughs> wayne speeds off then surprisingly given that he's going after a ferrari Mulder catches up to him <laughs> so yeah. like, Mulder's just in his like FBI rental car and he's like, uh, you know, <laughs> Wayne's flooring it in a Ferrari. And then Mulder just like, yeah, just manages to yeah. catch up to him. So yeah. Wayne knocks on the door of one of his appointments a week early. So yeah. <laughs> just a really funny moment because like Wayne tells him, I've got an appointment. I'm going to an appointment. Uh, Wayne's like, okay, then where are we going? Like, where's, where's his appointment? I'll join you. So it's just this, it's rather amusing shot where the door opens and and Wayne's like got to tell this woman that yeah I'm 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 here for our appointment and she's like but it's not till next week and he's like yeah well you know you you can't half ass insurance that's what I always say and Mulder's just like stood by his car arms yeah. folded just looking straight at her and it's just yeah classic but that that whole scene <laughs> I just love it it's like Mulder's kind of really really pushing his guys oh yeah yeah 
Wayne takes the woman's blood, and her kids run past them, and Wayne gets all melancholic about wanting kids and the difficulties yeah. that can arise from two cells coming together. Mulder pips the horn. He stands outside next to Wayne's car. Wayne asks if he can use the phone. We, we, we get something of the mindset here as, or, or, or the motivation as to what Wayne is doing. Like You, you get the sense. Uh, certainly, I think we... I mean, we're told a little later on just what it is that Wayne is doing, but I think it's during this scene where you kind of figure it out that, mm. yeah, okay, he's doing away with his babies, but he wants a baby. He, yeah. he seems like really melancholic about it. So, okay, it's not that, all right, he wants a, He wants an actual baby. He's trying, to, he's trying to get a perfect baby, a baby that doesn't have the horns, no mm. sign of his demonology, so to speak. So, yeah, that's an interesting kind of way of showing it to us in this scene, yeah. um, which which bizarrely gives him, kind of humanises him a bit, um, maybe too much for my liking, given some of the the, the atrocities that he's commis committed in this episode. Yeah. But uh, Wayne comes out of the house and Mulder has let the kids run riot in his car, in his Ferrari. <laughs> Wayne clearly feels agitated. Uh, then Mulder's phone rings. Scully tells him he's busted. Wayne called the FBI to tell them Mulder is harassing him. Mulder says, tell them I'm doing a background check on somebody. <laughs> it's almost like mm. he wants to get fired. Yeah, but the thing is, is he's not facing any of the repercussions. Look, it's Scully that's getting it, like we said earlier on. Like, she's getting the ass chewed out, and then she's yeah. like... Older, I'm getting a hard time. He's just like, cool, okay, yeah, yeah, funny. He's he's never in work long enough to get his ass chewed out. It's like because every morning he wakes up and goes off again on another kind of case. He's like, yeah, I'm surprised I've not just sent him an email. You're fired. Don't don't bother mm. coming back. I don't imagine the way he goes. <laughs> <laughs> not if it says from assistant curse anyway no wayne goes to see laura in her cell she doubts his story then she checks his neck and finds the bite mark that she left on the demon in her dream her supposed dream so he goes all succubus on her and basically yeah like sucks the life out of her um but doesn't quite manage it so the paramedics work on her and when S wayne says it was like she died in my arms uh, and then that's when they get a heartbeat and his face just like drops he's like oh crap yeah, it's great <laughs> although i do think the most surprised person there is the paramedic is that we've got a heart <laughs> <laughs> he just seems shocked but yeah i think i think uh, bruce campbell's quite good in this sequence of just you know like mm. oh crap how do I kill yeah. this woman again? <laughs> and Mulder's just like hanging in the background, just kind of watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mulder knows the truth, and he walks yeah. out with a look on his face that lets Wayne know that he knows the truth, as if Wayne didn't know that already. Oh. Wayne gets home to Betsy. She's cross that he's late, but she gives him the sonogram, says the doctor's found bony protrusions, uh, he looks downcast before offering to get a glass of warm milk before going to bed. Like, literally, yeah. <laughs> he's already like, oh, sonogram, right, drug her up, let's take it. He's just, he wastes no time, this guy, does he? <laughs> nope. And it's not, not even like a weight on him, it's just like, ah, and another one bites the dust. So Mulder arrives at the hospital to find Scully, who tells him, there's no evidence that Wayne did anything to Laura. Mulder hmm. says he's been doing a background check on Wayne. Multiple aliases. Names that suggest the devil. Scully ain't buying it. Demons, if such a thing. So this is this is the thing that got me. So Scully, I, I get why Scully is poo-pooing that this might be hmm. demons. But she says that, you know, such and such about demons if there is such a thing i'm not buying that line from scully at all yeah like this is a person of faith a catholic who has has recently come back to her faith 
And throughout several episodes, Revelations and the one I can't remember the name of from last season with uh, Emily Perkins in it, you know, when oh, the, yeah. the, the priest yeah. is going around and he's kind of killing all the... Yeah, it wasn't a good episode. I think it was our least favourite episode of season five. But either way, she's had two run-ins with clearly, like, you know forces of good and evil from a spiritual realm you know heaven and hell angels and demons all that kind of thing not to mention the very fact that she's catholic so her saying you know demons if there is such a thing that, that it just really threw me off the fact that they had that line of dialogue in there it's just like whoa hang on scully i get you doubting that this is demons but i don't get the doubt that demons in their entirety yeah. don't exist you know so yeah Crappy line of dialogue that shouldn't have been there, for, for my money, personally. So, Wayne brings Betsy her milk, and uh, back out Wayne's house, they search the ground. Yeah, so back, back at his other, so at Laura and Wayne's house, and now it's getting yeah. confusing. Mm -hmm. So, back at Laura and Wayne's house, they search the grounds, and they find a body with horns, a baby's mm. body. Mulder tells them to find Wayne, and this, this is where Mulder's kind of caught up he's I, I think he's one step behind us the audience if if the audience yeah. was being sharp on that scene before uh but he says yeah he's he's trying to have a normal child he's a hmm. demon he keeps on having babies these babies keep showing signs of the demonic so he, yeah he so he buries them and he's, he's literally working his way through women trying to make a normal child lovely wait wayne tries to take betsy's baby but she stops him she basically puts his hand around his throat and he's like what are you doing wayne and it's like oh okay there's a little twist Mate. for you did, I, did you I, see it coming I, yeah i was starting to have suspicions about that okay. i don't know why there just was something just felt a bit a bit off but i love this sequence i, because... I think if they'd have made this what so I, I i think if they'd have made this woman a bit more like laura and not have her as this kind of strong powerful modern kind of like you made the observation before that she was very different her demeanor yeah. was very different to laura and i think mm -hmm. if they'd have made her like laura that would have made sense because you'd get the sense that he was preying on this particular kind of personality so yeah you know i i i, I did see it kind of coming i loved how we get the fire and brimstone again and mm. him like you know grabbing the feet and she's just <laughs> it's just that uh, what are you doing wayne <laughs> and then she just dra drags him in by the throat but what yeah. i what i really enjoyed i just thought it was a nice touch was the fact that even when she pulls him in by the throat the fire still going on behind them yeah it, it's, it's like still... whose fire is it <laughs> yeah i just kind of love that idea so yeah like yeah. at this point you already know the kind of sting in the tail that's going to come yeah yeah definitely. i feel Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think but by this point, certainly. Yeah. So Mulder and Scully are, are, are driving and Mulder turns the car around to drive to a second house registered to Wayne, which is like, I don't, I don't feel like this guy is very good at covering his tracks. It's like no. he just he just leaves information out there. I, I still don't quite understand where inf where Mulder got the info about his other personas. That it just, yeah. he just seemed to pull yeah. that one out of his ass because I do, I do get the idea that this guy's been doing this for a very long time mm. but you think he'd be better at it yeah so they're stopped by Wayne's car coming towards them and it's Betsy mm. who's all bloody and she's like in hysterics and she's she's saying that Wayne took my baby Wayne took my baby now at this point I would kind of think that Mulder would go off to the house and scully would stay with yeah her, but it turns out that's not the case <laughs> yeah it's so weird because <laughs> yeah so they go to the house presumably leaving poor betsy bleeding out yep. by her car um okay uh, so they go to the house with the police and they find wayne in the backyard digging now obviously in the interim the police are with Mulder and scully so presumably they've called the police 
Betsy has been given uh, taken to hospital or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming that's when they've left with the rest of the police task force and gone to do their thing. And then that's when Betsy's like, right, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so they go to the house with the police and they find Wayne in the backyard digging and he says Betsy took the baby. Mulder's kind of like, oh, like, well, we're not falling for your lies and, and all this. Oh, that might have been Scully, to be honest. Um, yeah. And then just before he can say anything further, Deputy Stevens puts three rounds in his chest and... <laughs> We get like his final dying words when he's like, I just wanted what everyone else wants. It's just like, yeah, yeah, there you go. But he's, he's in the process of saying, like, um, she's not like Laura, she's like just before he shot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Which, you get the idea that he's, he's 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 put two and two together and he's kind of realized what's going on, or she's told him after she's grabbed him by the neck. But mm. he's he's then searching her garden because he's did the same at his house. Yeah, <laughs> and he's just he's just looking for like regular normal bodies that have been buried. I think. Yeah, and the thing is now both properties are registered to him, so yeah. so he's got two properties in which he's like yeah he's just yeah multiplied the the yeah. supposed dead babies that mm. are a result of his hand. But so Wayne is placed in hospital, right next to his wife, the wife that. He's, you know, it's a lot of bad decisions being made by law enforcement in this episode and people yeah. in positions of power, uh, which which is kind of believable. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about real world situations, I can buy it, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they they put him right next to his wife. But really, it, it's all just a way of showing us a little bit of humanity that that Wayne somehow has because... Well, I mean, first we go, well, you know, yeah. So he gives up the ghost, basically. He gives up the, the life force, whatever one you, you want to call it, back to Laura, and Laura is awakened once more. Now, I don't know if that was intentional, whether he kind of le just died, gave, gave up, so to speak, and gave her back her life, or whether he just died and had no choice for the life force to go back to her because she was there across from him in the next bed. I, I I love this, Brian, because I had a completely different take on this sequence than what you did. Oh, right, go so on. So I took it as him going like, well, this body's screwed. I'll just take that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I can't go about with all these murdered babies, but you know, if I jump into that body, I can take her and mm -hmm. uh, everything will be rosy. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, you know, that didn't one, cross my one mind, but it's two perfectly com valid. Two completely different interpretations. Well, well, three, three completely different interpretations. Um, you mm -hmm. know, did she get her life back because she was just in the right place at his wrong time, or did he give in to whatever little bit of humanity he had and give her her life back? Or did he show himself to have absolutely zero humanity and thought, oh, despite everything I've put her through, <laughs> I'll have that body. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, all three seem pretty plausible to me. And it's it's it kind of makes me like that scene a lot more because mm. I, I love it when you can, when it can be open to interpretation like that. Create your own adventure. Choose your own adventure mm. kind of thing. Scully digs up a perfectly fine looking baby, one of four. All normal. Betsy wanted a, a full-on demon baby. What? Go on. What, what a statement, Brian. Scully digs up a perfectly normal baby. <laughs> Just... <laughs> That's <laughs> one of four. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, that just tackled me the wrong way. Uh huh. Well, you know, as opposed mm. to your demon babies, so yeah. <laughs> no, no horns on these ones. These are just your normal, average, bug standard babies. Four of them. Box in the corpse, baby corpse. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. At least that's how many they've found at the moment. There could be more mm. there, but so yeah, it's, it's a demon baby basically. Mulder's like she was a demon. She met a demon so that she could have a pro have a proper demon baby. And it's then that we see Betsy driving off into the sunset in the Ferrari with a little baby hand. Little yeah. baby hand just sticking out of the bassinet. Little demon yeah. baby hand. <laughs> Looking like something off Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's the end of that episode. Final thoughts. So it, it feels like I've been talking about how crazy this season's been so far with jumping back and forth. And this feels like your bog standard mid season filler episode. You know, it's just everything about it is just, it's fine. I enjoy it. Um, if I'm going back to the series, is it one that I'm really going to jump on again? Probably not. Maybe it depends on the mood I'm in. It's, it's a completely forgettable. I find a lot of the time, whenever the X Files delves into the world of, say, religion as in the form of demons uh, and those kind of things, mm. those episodes always feel a bit clunky to me. You know, the supernatural mm. elements. It just, yeah, like for some reason, they just they just never feel quite as good as say like the UFO type stuff. You know, the okay. conspiracy theory. And I, again, this one, it it's just a again a throwaway fun episode. Mm. I, I like it. I don't love it. Um, <clears throat> I'd probably give it a three out of five. I, I am torn on this one because I did really enjoy it as I was watching it. Yeah. Um, and as we were talking it through, a few other little little niggles kind of came to light where I'm like, actually, that that doesn't make sense or this doesn't make... Mm. Or it's maybe not as... It's not put together well enough that the that you join the dots quick enough to be able to mm. move on. Like, you know, the whole thing with the, you know, Mulder and Scully just ditching Betsy. It's like you, you have to do a bit of legwork in your brain to go, oh, that's what must have happened. Yeah. Um, but it's just like, now we see her. The last time we see her, she's like all bloodied. And the next time we see her, she's like driving off into the sunset with her baby. Um, but yeah, I I enjoy it. I enjoy this mostly because of Mulder's attitude to everything. His attitude to authority in in terms of the people he works for with the FBI. His attitude towards Wayne in terms of how he's just right in his face and you know mm. like chasing after him in the car and like, where are we going? Uh, so I, I just yeah, I do have fun with it. Um, I kind of agree with you in the sense that it feels like one of the mid-season episodes or just a filler episode. But I, I would say it's, dare I say, a top-tier filler episode, if that makes sense. Um, so I would give it a three and a half out of five. I was I was tempted to give it a four, but I, I think I'm going to go three and a half. Um, All right. Yeah. Sure. Are you positive, Brian? Okay. You don't want to change your mind? No, no, but I'm, I, I swear I'm standing right now. Three and a half. Well, tell me about the next episode, The Rain King. Are we having an upturn? Are we getting another classic x episode? I remember very little about The Rain King, except for the fact that it's it's got like, I think there's like a con man in it who is, is one of these like, you know, I, I can bring the rain. You know, so he goes to places where there's droughts and he can make it rain, supposedly. Mm. Uh, I, you know what, I've got a feeling, and it's not a, it's not a good feeling at this point, but I've got a feeling it's kind of like a comedy episode. Right, it's, okay. It's either a comedy episode or it's, it's, it's a bit like Terms of Endearment, in which is, yes, there's comedy in there, but it's, it's not explicitly a comedy episode. But I, just I, like a like a like a bumbling I, con man who who finds out that he actually can bring the rain, and the, the shenanigans remember. that follow it. Yeah, it's been it's been a long time since I've seen it, and it's not it's not top tier season six for me. So it's clearly not one that I've rushed back to and dissected many times, like a lot of you know season one to four or anything like that. I I I get the feeling. If I'm making projections, I get the feeling it's going to be somewhat like Terms of Endearment in, in that we're going to come away from it with some positives, but essentially thinking it was middle-of-the-road kind of filler. Okay. Well, some, sometimes you need that. You need a little bit of the, the average before you get mm. the great, I suppose, as long as it's not tedious and boring, mm. we, we should be fine. Yeah. So, as always, to everyone out there on YouTube land or whichever podcast service you listen to us, if you don't mind reviewing or liking yeah, whatever they allow you to do, it really helps people discover our channel and our passion for the X-Files. And we'll see you next week for The Rain King.